In two minutes, making the most of the micro, looking this week at some robots and other mechanical devices which are controlled by the computer. First, the news headlines from John Humphreys. The miners' strike that started in Wales today is going to spread. 66,000 Yorkshire miners are to come out next Monday. They want the coal board to abandon plans to close a pit in South Wales, but the board say they won't. Miners in other areas say they want a national decision on what action to take. It's not clear how soon the strike will start to hit industry. There are huge coal stocks, about half a year's supply. Leaders of a million local council workers have accepted a new pay offer. It's just under 5%. It'll mean weekly increases of between £3.25 and £3.75. The chairman of the employer's side described the settlement as a return to reality after the water workers won increases of over 10%. The government is to give British Leyland another £100 million. That's £50 million less than they wanted. Tomorrow, BL is to launch its new car, the Maestro. It's the big brother of the Metro. And BL say if they're going to make a profit, the car must be a success. The woman they call the Queen of Honky Tonk is dead. Piano player Winifred Atwell died of a heart attack in Australia. She was 69. Miss Atwell, who once weighed 16 stone, had 16 hits in Britain during the 1950s. She said she hit the keys so hard she got calluses on her fingers. A mounted policeman galloped through the streets of London today with a letter bomb. It had been found at the offices of a fur company and he took it to a police station where it was defused. And finally, the Day family from Oxfordshire spent nine years building a boat and another 18 months sailing it to Australia. But when they got there, they were told they couldn't stay because they didn't have the proper visas. Mrs Day said, I know it sounds silly, but we were so busy building the boat, we didn't even think about it. Now they're trying to persuade the government to let them stay. That's it from me. Good night. This is Tuesday evening on BBC One. At 7.20, Vox Pop, the people of Darwin in Lancashire, voice some more of their thoughts about the world and the way it's treating them. At 7.50, Terry and June embark on a cheap wine-buying trip across the Channel, a rather chaotic excursion after Terry misses the ferry. We are back on the rails at 8.20 to wind our way up a mountain in Greece along one of the world's great little railways. Then, after the 9 o'clock news, play for today, his last love, for Annabelle, a widow whose plans for marriage don't altogether meet with the approval of her children. At 10.25, a thousand Welsh voices make the rafters ring in the Royal Albert Hall. At 11 o'clock, David Dimbleby presents another edition of People and Power, and finally, Phil Silver stars as Sergeant Bilko. But now back to tonight on BBC One, and it's everything under control in part eight of the computer series, Making the Most of the Micro. The history of the world has been shaped by revolution. Revolutionary discoveries, revolutionary inventions, revolutionary ideas. This is part of British Leyland's sales promotion for the 1982 Motor Show. Everything you see, from the banks of slight projectors to the robot arm, is being controlled by a microcomputer. Well, here's a more modest vehicle. It's the BBC's robot buggy, and it's being controlled by a micro. Well, it's following this black line, trying to find its way out of the maze, and also trying to find this light over here. Well, we'll see how it's getting on and how it works a bit later on in the programme. But how can we get a micro to sense what's going on around it and then control a piece of equipment? Well, let's dig into it a little bit. It's not quite as difficult as it seems. Well, with me today again is John Cole, who's going to dig into these mysteries. John, what's the setup here? Well, we've got a digital setup here, Mac. We've got uh, a games paddle with a switch on it and uh, 
a set of lights, and when I push the switch, uh, the lights, as you'll see, change.